it's your girl, Misty Senorita, and I'm back at it again with a back at it again. Yes, I got this cute ass smoky eye tutorial for y'all to go with my little cheetah print dress for the night, okay? Me and Bay in the town, about to do what we do, so just have to come with a little sexy sleigh, you know? <laughs> but um, yes, stay tuned, like, comment, share, subscribe, let a girl know what y'all think. So I have already started with my wig cap glued down. I'm just going to go ahead and clean off the excess glue that you see there with some rubbing alcohol so that way it is clean to apply my glue. Now I'm just going to go ahead and apply some foundation all over my wig cap so it can look real scalpy when I put my wig on. So you can literally just dab it directly onto the wig cap. You can use powder, foundation, it's totally up to you and whatever foundation that you use. So I'm just gonna go ahead and make sure it goes back a decent distance. So if I wanted to part it a little further, I can do that. Now with my ghost bond and my popsicle stick, I'm just gonna put a line right in front of where the wig cap starts. And I'm just gonna dot the line so I can control how much glue I'm using. Then I'm just going to go ahead and use my popsicle stick to spread out the glue. I use the popsicle stick. I understand it now that I've been doing my wigs for some time. I understand why YouTubers use the popsicle stick. It's not so messy. The glue gets very tacky and hard to like take off of your fingers and take off of your comb. So it's just easier to use this popsicle stick. I got it from Dollar Tree um, to apply your glue. And as you can see, it makes the line uh, just a little bit more organized and neat. So once my glue has dried clear, um, I'm just positioning the wig right now. But as you can see here, it has dried clear. I'm just going to go ahead and take my wig and begin to press in the lace where I had put the glue. Now you're literally just pulling it forward. As you can see here, I know my fingers are in the way a little bit, but you're literally just pulling it forward and placing it right on top of the glue so that way it can stick. Um, you don't want to press it in too much with your fingers. That's why I have the comb in my hand. But you, all you have to do once that glue has dried clear is literally apply the lace and look at how it lays. Like that shit is beautiful. Also, I am going to cut the flaps. Um, I have worn this wig before, but most of you ladies who wear wigs know every time you apply it, it always goes on different each time. So I'm just going to go ahead and cut off that excess flap. As you can also see here, my side was not complying. It did not want to lay down. It did not want to stick. So just to make life a little easy, what I did was I went ahead and cleared it of any hair. I took my ghost bomb glue and I just placed a little dot there as you can see and I'm just going to let it dry clear. I'm not going to press it down right away. I'm going to move on, make sure the rest of my frontal is laid down and I'm going to let that little piece that I just put dry and I'm going to get back to it and go ahead and press it down into the clear glue. So now you can see it is now laying and this frontal is ready to go baby that's growing out of my scalp you can't tell me that's not mine here you can see i'm just pulling out my baby hairs so that way i can get them prepared i cut it down a little bit i don't like my baby hairs too long I'm gonna go ahead and add some edge control. I do use the Got To Be As Edge Control sometimes. I don't like to use it all the time because it turns white, but here I am using the Got To Be, and I'm just creating my baby hairs with um, the baby hair brush. Literally just adding a little bit of glue, cutting it down, and then just literally just doing a swoop. You don't have to do anything more than that. It's not science. I know it looks hard, but if you're patient, you'll get exactly what you're looking for. Even here, I didn't know what I was doing when I created this baby hair, but it actually really came together. If you need to add more edge control, do that because then you can manipulate the hair and have it go whatever direction that you want it to go in. Same thing with the, the rest of the baby hairs throughout the entire frontal. 
you cut it down short you go ahead you add your edge control and then you just go ahead and swoop it with your edge control brush and your fingers I did not get the other side of my head because of the way the camera was positioned but you guys pretty much get the idea of how I get my baby hairs so once my baby hairs are done I just go ahead and put on something to just hold my edges down hold the glue down hold the wig down and then I move on to my face I am going to be getting started with my face with my elf for this primer and just add that all over before you start anything on your face it helps put everything and keep everything in place and then I am going to start my brows with my precise eyebrow pencil by benefits as you can see I did not get my eyebrows done I actually don't like getting my eyebrows done anymore what I usually do now is I outline my brow and then I just pluck the excess I feel like it looks much more natural and more full but by getting started on my eyebrows, I literally just outline how I want my eyebrows to look, the thickness, the inside of the brows. I begin to fill it in towards the outside of the brows and it's okay if it looks a little crazy. It's fine. That's what concealer is for. Concealer is an eraser. So if it's thick and all over the place, totally okay. Now with my MAC concealer, I'm going to apply it underneath my eyebrows and I'm going to use the brush to begin to sculpt the eyebrow. As you can see, I did not put the MAC concealer directly underneath my eyebrow. Give yourself some space to work with. Give yourself some space to correct. Go in with the brush and correct with the brush. You'll see on the other eyebrow same thing here you see I'm not adding it directly under the brow I'm not completely cleaning the brow yet I bring the concealer up with my brush so that way it creates more of a precise line and I'm not gonna front the longest part of my makeup routine is my eyebrows which is why for the most part on most of my previous videos I don't include the eyebrow portion because it just takes so I spend about 45 minutes doing my eyebrows alone now after I've cleaned the bottom I usually use that as an opportunity to begin to perfect the brow you stroke the middle insides of your brow you don't want them to be thick you don't want them to look like caterpillars on your face so in the middle inside of my brow I literally just stroke it and as you see I'm just going in and out in and out in and out it's a pencil and an eraser I go in I, I add I fix my brow and then I go with my eraser and I fix whatever I might have messed up and then of course you're packing on or you're, you're blotting it out I would say with, a, with my blending brush now for the top of the brow using the same shade I am going to do the same thing I don't apply it directly I use the brush to actually clean the brow and that's pretty much how you get your shade so it doesn't matter how you put your brow on it really doesn't the conceal the work is all in the concealer right so now that I've gone ahead and sculpted out my brow I am just going to go ahead and blend out the concealer we don't want it to be too harsh on my face when I add my um, foundation so just blend out your concealer as much as you can and you also don't want it to be too light that bright highlight underneath your brows after you take pictures is a little weird now for the fun part I am going to be starting my eyeshadow with the color smooth out of the elf opposites abstract palette now I, I didn't really add any um, eyeshadow primer or concealer to my eyes because it's more of a smoky eye look so I'm just gonna go ahead and pat in that color it's a little dark but you'll see how it all comes together I'm gonna pack it in all over my eyelid just like so
just smooth it out make sure it's neat not ugly not harsh now i'm going to use more of a warmer shade and the shade of the color is actually warm i am going to on top of that darker shade mix it in until it creates a nice blend a nice complexion i want to say you see how that harsh dark color kind of gives it more of a warm tone when i add that warm brown that's what we're going for because you don't with a smoky eye you don't necessarily want the black to be harsh my favorite palette now that's the morphe pride palette in the color nyc i'm gonna go ahead and apply that black all to the top of my lid that's what's really gonna create that smoky eye effect and because it's black you don't have to go in so much if you add a little bit it'll portray exactly what you're looking for so as you can see i'm just making sure that it all blends out correctly I'm gonna go back in with that warm brown shade and I'm just gonna blend it in a little more because again, I don't want those colors to collide and be harsh. With my Juvia Place Nubian 2 palette, I'm gonna use the shade Sheba, which is a dark glittery shade and I'm gonna go ahead and apply that to the insides of my eyelid. So that way you have that glittery look going into the smoky eye look. It's so sexy. Look, I'm already feeling myself. A went ahead and added my excellent hair tronics lashes off camera. It was actually my first time doing really long lashes and I really like it. Now I don't use the orange undertone thing for a color corrector. I'm just gonna go ahead and use a concealer that is close to the same shade as my um, skin. And I'm gonna blend it out with my beauty blender to pretty much just get my entire complexion to be leveled. Okay, once I've done that, I'm going to use my lighter concealer underneath my eye before I put on my foundation. I'm just going to go ahead and blend it out how you typically would. And the reason I'm doing this is because the look is more of a dramatic look. It's, of course, packing on a little bit more than I typically would. So because I want it to be dramatic, I'm going to go ahead and start with concealer before I put on my foundation. So using my Fenty Beauty foundation, I'm going to apply it with a brush. I apply it directly to the brush and then I go in all over my face, all over my neck so that way everything blends out. When you are doing underneath your eyes, make sure you look up so you don't create any harsh creases. But for the most part, just go ahead and spread your concealer out all over, I'm sorry, spread your foundation out all over your face with your foundation brush. Now going in with not my LA Girl Concealer, my matte concealer, because remember this is more of a dramatic look. I'm going to go in and put my concealer under my eyes, um, forehead of course, underneath my nose, my chin, um, below my cheekbones, and I am going to do down the bridge of my nose, but I'm going to show you how I do that. And using my black opal foundation stick as contour, I'm just going to go ahead and add that in my darker areas. So that's my cheekbones um, along my hairline, uh, along my jawline. I'm going to add that as well because those are the defined areas of my face. Now I'm not using a beauty blender right away this time. I'm gonna start with my concealer brush. The brush gives more of a dramatic look. It gives more of a flawless and seamless look. So I'm gonna start with my concealer brush and I'm just gonna go ahead and blend that concealer out under my eyes. Again, when you're doing under your eyes, look up to avoid any creases. Wherever you applied your concealer, you're just gonna go in with your brush and you're gonna blend it out. And make sure you blend, ladies, because, again, you don't want harsh lines. I'm sure, as you can see, when I do my face, as I'm, like, not finished, you can see the harsh lines a little bit. So make sure you blend it out a lot. 
you can blending is your friend you can never do too much blending as you can see I blended with the brush and now I'm blending with the beauty blender I don't want it to look weird I don't want it to look crazy now using the other side of the beauty blender not the side you used for the concealer you're gonna use the other side for contour okay so uh, the areas where I added the dark contour the black opal stick I'm gonna use the other side of my beauty blender to blend that out now adding concealer down the bridge of my nose I'm just gonna go ahead and blend that out with a beauty blender instead of a brush because now I want to define my nose it's coming together so using again my contour stick I am using a brush to add the contour to shape my nose so down the sides of where I added that concealer I'm just gonna go ahead and blend it out put some nice precise lines so that way you can define your nose very well I don't really know how to explain it it's, it's easier for you to see it for them for me to explain it Now I'm going in with my Sasha Buttercup setting powder. With this look, I am not going to bake. I am literally going to take my beauty blender, I'm going to dip it into the, the setting powder, and I'm going to press the setting powder into my skin. I'm not baking at all. I want it to, you know, sit there. I want it to soak into the concealer and create that kind of bright look underneath my eyes. And we're going to also add that to the other places where I added the concealer, bridge of my nose, forehead, a um, little bit on my chin as well. Now using my Huda Beauty setting powder because it's more of a warm tone, I'm going to go ahead and set the concealer that I placed underneath my um, contour with this warmer color. I'm sculpting my face pretty much. I'm pretty much just adding the cheekbones, adding how the shape I want my face to look now with my fit me uh, foundation this is a foundation it is a powder foundation but I use it as a contour I'm gonna add it to the areas where I added my wet contour I much prefer a powdery foundation on top of a wet I'm sorry a powdery contour on top of a wet contour now with a larger total face brush, I'm going to go in using my L'Oreal True Match foundation, kind of like a bronzer, to melt everything together and just bring everything together with the total face brush. This brush is my setting powder brush. I'm just going to go ahead and dust off any excess and just make it a little bit more flawless and seamless with my setting powder brush. Course, you gotta have the setting spray let that all dry in now this was new this was a new look I'm using a red eyeshadow as blush I don't typically do blush but it looked really good with this look because I was wearing cheetah print so I used the red color in the pride palette and I'm using the Maybelline um, contour palette to mix my blushes kind of came out pretty cool I actually really liked the way it looked and then I'm gonna use the contour brush to clean it so that way it's not messy and all over the place this is my Milani highlighter in the shade strobe light because again this look is dramatic it is sexy I'm adding that to all the places where light bounces off of my face you know and of course, after you've done your whole face, your eyebrows tend to wear away. So if you want to go back in with your eyebrow pencil and fix it up a bit, I definitely strongly suggest that. And then using my Benefits highlighter pencil, I'm just going to outline underneath my eyebrows a little bit. Also, just the arch on the top right there. Perfect. Now for some lippy. I have no idea what kind of lipstick this is. I bought it from the 99 cent store. I'm just going to go ahead and apply a brown on the outside of my lips. And then I'm going to use my red um, Fenty Beauty uh, lipstick and apply that on the inside. So I'm using brown on the outsides to outline and I'm using the red on the insides. There you go. And I'm applying it with a brush.
and that red lippy goes really well with the red blush. Alright, so taking my pen curls out, I did do these pen curls on my wig head uh, prior to me putting the wig on. Again, I've worn a wig before so I know exactly where the part would lay gonna comb out those curls I don't comb them out like with a small tooth comb I literally just use my fingers and a really large comb and I didn't really cut comb them out too much I just pretty much combed them out with my fingers and a large comb and there you have it this sexy date night glam look I hope you guys liked it like comment share subscribe and let me know what you think below thanks for watching